Hi, my name is Saro and I'm a 2030 FIDE rated chess player. In this video I want to present you three deadly traps in the so-called Budapest Gambit and how to avoid them. But before we start with the variations, let's first talk about the history. So the Budapest Gambit was first played in 1896, so over 100 years ago, but became only popular 20 years later when the very strong player Wiedmer beat Rubinstein, also a very strong player of his time. So let's start with the variations. White plays d4, black plays knight f6 and after the move c4, black can play the Budapest Gambit by playing e5. And e5 is a very aggressive move, immediately contesting the center in the second move, offering a pawn. It's a good opening if you really need to play for a win. So if you're an aggressive player, this might be a great opening for you. And what white should do here is d takes e5. Winning a pawn and black plays knight g4, immediately attacking the e5 pawn, which is not defended yet. So white plays knight f3 to defend it and black continues attacking it. White defends it with bishop f4 and now black should solve the issue of the f8 bishop. Yeah, So he plays bishop b4 check. White plays knight to d2 and black attacks the e5 pawn a third time by playing queen to e7. After attacking the bishop with a3, black has a very surprising response here. It's knight takes e5. And the reason is that white really can't take the piece on pre on b4 because after taking on b4, black would just checkmate with knight d3 check mate. So let's go back. How can white avoid this? So white needs to control the d3 square by for example playing e3 and the trap is avoided, the bishop has to move and white is fine. So let's go to our next example. So d4 again, knight f6, c4, e5. And here white plays something which is usually not recommended d5 in this variation. So bishop c5 and now white thinks let's pin the knight on f6. So it can't move because otherwise the queen would be lost. The funny thing here however is that actually black already has two ways to win the game. The easiest probably is just knight to e4 offering the queen on pre on d8. So bishop takes d8. Bishop takes f2 checkmate. Again, white won material, but black mated the white king. So let's go back and look at the other winning combination. It's surprising, but bishop takes f2 is working because the king has to take, because otherwise only a pawn is lost for nothing. So king takes and knight e4 check, threatening the bishop on g5 while also checking. So black regains the piece and won a pawn. Additionally, the white king is not very safe. So how to avoid this? Just don't play this variation with d5. It's not good. Yeah, Taking e5 or maybe e3 are good. The rest probably not. So let's go to our third and last example. So again, first d4, knight f6, c4, e5, d takes e5, the good variation for white, knight g4, knight f3, and if you remember, in the first example I gave you knight c6 and here I want to give you an alternative and it's d6. It's not very correct, but it's playable. White is winning a pawn in this variation. However, black gets a rather good development. So let's say white plays h3, not feeling the danger. Now black has a very, very surprising combination and it's knight takes f2. Four king, queen and rook. So the king is forced to take on f2. And now the idea is this discovered check because the queen on d8 is suddenly attacking the queen on d1 and the king is restricted from going back to e1. So the king cannot defend the queen because it's in check. So let's say white takes the bishop and black takes the queen and black won the queen for bishop and knight, which is a very bad trade. 
I hope you liked this video. If you did so, feel free to leave a like. And if you want to see more of these videos, feel free to subscribe. See you.